I love to knit because I feel like it's really relaxing. Like all the stress melts away in between the needles and it's really fun. There are so many patterns and stitches and a whole bunch of endless possibilities of things you could do with it. Seeing your project get developed, it's like encouraging and it just makes you want to keep going and make more things. A student of mine came into class and she had knitting. Once there's one knitter, then someone else says, oh, I know how to do that, or I crochet, or this, and I said, wow. So out of a small school and a small class, I had so many knitters or crocheters. I'm like, is it really that popular? I said, oh, we got to do something with this. But we didn't have the resources to do that. And then when I started school this September, I got a flyer from Scholastic talking about this Learn to Knit program and I got all excited about it and signed right up for it. And I had a new group of students getting a feel for who knows or who wants to know and told them about, you know, well, if we get these starter kits, we're going to start a club. And then um, in March, I walked into my classroom and there were two big cardboard boxes waiting for me on the desk. And I thought it was just another delivery of supplies, but the knitting needles poke through the cardboard and you could see the needle sticking out. And I said, oh, it came. And we opened it up and it was like a Christmas present. We were so excited. So we jumped on it right away and we put flyers around and every Wednesday we meet and there we started. And then my friend told me one day that the school's starting a knitting club. So I got very excited. So I joined and Miss Cummings taught me and ever since then, I can't stop knitting. I've been knitting for about four years now, and I've been working on a bunch of different projects. I learned to knit because I, the knitting club was offering um, knitting, and um, I wanted to help out and it seemed fun. I crochet because it's fun, and when you're done with a project, you feel good. I've been knitting since fourth grade. Uh, I picked up the interest when one of my friends taught me and I've been knitting and crocheting ever since then. I keep going because it's so easy to do. It's really easy for me to just pick it up and you know get these projects done. It's um, a great gift um, and it never really loses my interest. I learned to crochet this year in Knitting Club. Um, some of my fellow classmates taught me how to crochet and I've already made this. Well, I'm not done, but um, I'm working on it. Knitting and crocheting just it releases this tension that I think a lot of high schoolers build up. We talk while we knit, talk about the latest things that happen in school. The reason that I like knitting is because it takes me off of like watching TV and on the computer and it relaxes me and stuff. I love the accomplishment of finishing something and be able to wear it and I love getting compliments on all the scarves that I make. So I love the end product. I love teaching people and being hands-on and I love the satisfaction of, you know, passing on your knowledge. When the, the students came to join us, we would start them off with how to wind up a ball and we would cast on for them, but really, we can't possibly do all the teaching. So each one teach one, or I call it a pay it forward. You learn something you need to teach too. Because when they teach someone else, it reinforces their skills and it puts them in a position where they can feel good about what they're doing. I have taught many other people to knit because surprisingly to me, at first, a lot of people take a big interest in it. But as a the club, more, more and more people find me in the hallways and say, oh, can you teach me? And I'm, it's, it's great, I love it. People see me knitting and they're like, oh, that's so cool, can you teach me? So I teach other people too. I started knitting, I think, either fourth or fifth grade when my mom and I just decided that we wanted to do something crafty, I guess, um, and I've been knitting ever since. Now I'm teaching her how to crochet, <laughs> so that's nice bonding time. Oh, I have had such comments from my students that give me such a sense of satisfaction. Some comments about how I don't hang out on Facebook anymore, I, I now have something to do to keep myself busy how much um, relaxation they get from it, and this has been my favorite, where a student will go home with the knitting, and the mother will say, oh, I used to know how to do that, and then there's my student reintroducing the knitting to the mother, and they then share a craft together that has kind of gone away. That's fantastic, that they have something then for teenagers to have in common with their parents and their grandparents. 
I think that's a gift. There's a, a grown respect for the elderly as they see, you know, because they see how frustrating and they see them doing how easy it is. But when they get together, they're like fascinated. So, and that, that brings them together. I love the Knitting Indians because um, the environment of it is just very friendly. And I literally did not know who you guys yeah. were. And now we're like, we're friends. Yeah. And like, we just have something in common and it's knitting. And we can talk about anything. It just knitting gets you talking and it's yeah. fun. It's a very good link for kids with the community. Younger kids meeting older kids and they start talking about knitting. Oh, can you show me how to do this? And they end up thinking, oh, what class should I take next year? What's your experience with this teacher? Oh, I want to do this or this job. What class do I need? It's a good tool to build a trusting relationship. Especially the girls who are shy. I found uh, they were more outgoing, lifting their self-esteem in terms of saying, I, I can do this. That gives them, you know, that sense of, uh, of accomplishment and belonging. And it seems to have um, given them something to create on their own. So they can work together, which gives you a social aspect and also an individual aspect. You know, and then the club as a whole, helping the community out. I love giving back. Like, I think it's just so nice because it's like we get all these different things and it's like, yeah, you could go off and buy things and all that, but I think it's better to make something with your own hands and be like, yeah, I made this to give it to somebody. Also, um, it's a good source of motivation um, to be able to know that you're making something for a cause. The purpose of the club, I believe, is twofold. First of all, it's to instill something in the knitter or the crocheter, something of um, self explanation, meaning a way in which to explore something inside yourself, a creative ability, which a lot of people don't realize they have until they start knitting or crocheting. So there's an emotional part of the club. The other part is the feeling of self-worth, being able to help someone out. But we're trying to establish um, a community of knitters and crocheters that has a focus on doing something for the community and how to keep the club going forward. Our goal is to, one, make Nyack scarves and hats and stuff and sell them at the football games for next year and raise money. And that money we're going to donate to a charity. So we, we have our starter kits and we're making scarves, but it will be anything that has Nyack colors on it that they can sell. Because it's also going to then get PR for our club. Where'd you get that scarf? Oh, the Knitting Indians made it for us. I'm going to have labels made up too that it's made by hand for it. So the kids are going to be very proud to see other kids wearing their stuff. We're probably going to get more kids wanting to join the club and the money that we make from selling these items, we're going to be able to reinvest for more materials to make more things. We're also going to then take some of the cash and donate it to charities of our choice. Each of us are individually um, knitting a square and we're going to put them all together to make a blanket for the Warm Up America Foundation. It's very warm to see young people wanting to give to others and help others. And you know that not everybody there has the finances to do it, but they're willing to put themselves out and do for others. I always wanted to learn how to knit because like on TV, yeah, I'd see people knit and I'm like, oh, I want to try. And so at first it was really hard for me because I'm a lefty and everybody else is a righty. So I'm trying to get it. But when I finally got it, like when I, it was like so much, like so much fun. And then I would just sit there like, okay, let me do this. And it's like, okay, I have to do my homework. One more row and I'll finish. Wait, another row and I'll finish. So it's like, it's really addicting after once you get it, so. She was so frustrated, and if she quit, I totally wouldn't blame her because she, she just got that frustrated. She stuck with it, stuck with it, and stuck with it. And I said, oh, Eva, you have stick to -itiveness. You will use that through your entire life. It tells them two things. One, they can do anything that they really want to do. Anything that they set their mind out to do, they are very capable of achieving. Second, don't hesitate to ask for help because there will be somebody who will help you, there will somebody who will guide you, but still be proud of what you're doing because you're the one who's doing it. They have the power in their hands. They can actually do it. And they, when they see the result, they, they're so proud of themselves. Just the skill of learning how to knit is, is more than just knitting. 
And industrial arts classes have kind of gone the wayside. A lot of schools have gotten rid of their programs. There's uh, wood shop, metal shop, auto shop. Those classes have disappeared from a lot of campuses. And I think when a student has a craft, a hobby, um, a skill that they can have an occupation with that uses their hands, I think makes them feel so powerful. Because if you can do one thing with your hands, I think it lends itself to learning anything else. Or when you come across an obstacle and you don't know how to fix something, well, you're more likely to give it a shot because you have some skills from, be it my class, be it from knitting, be it from an auto shop class, that maybe you'll give it a shot, maybe you'll try, rather than throwing your hands up and saying, well, I can't do that, I don't know how. I try to incorporate some of the things we do with the Knitting and Crocheting Club into the classroom. Uh, it will build mathematics in a realistic situation. We did a lot with fractions and cost analysis and things of that nature. If it's this much a yarn, how much it will cost the club, those type of things. So the girls in the class who are knitters or crocheters who are part of the club, they begin to become more active in the class. They will inter, you know, integrate with the other students, they'll try to help them. The life lesson that I see in this is not to give up. And I absolutely stress on that. No matter how difficult and how bumpy the road, you have to stick with it and complete what you said you're gonna do. Even, and sometimes it's not what they wanted, what they envisioned, but it turns out to be beautiful because they did it and they completed something and, and they get very excited at the end when they see it. We're a big family. We sort of feed off of each other. A lot of the people in the club have branched off on their own and found patterns and then they show me things they can do and then I sort of show them things I can do. And what's amazing is that Mrs. Cummings has taught many of these girls to knit. I've helped some of them and now exponentially it's growing and growing. So it's not just me. It's not just me with a bunch of high school students. It's me and the, the faculty and the community and the parents and it, it just grows. These starter kits are really the seed of this whole project that is going to bloom into a full garden that's going to keep going and going. Thanks to these kits, we were able to get started and then it just reached out from there and grew. And we've always joked in our class about how cool knitting is, but while we laugh and we say it tongue in cheek, knitting is really cool. And I joke with the kids, but we are the coolest club in Nyack High School. <laughs> and we've already started 40 students knitting, and that is just since March. So not only are we the coolest club, we're probably going to be the biggest. I want to knit, like, forever. <laughs>